And we are back. This is week three uh, of the Infinite <laughs> Podcast. Uh, we're back with that. Giovanni and Alexander, and we got some more fun AI updates that we're going to sort of just peruse through. Um, yeah, we'll just kind of kick it off. So, uh, Giovanni, what's going on in your life personally? And then let's talk about right. some other fun stuff. Well, I just um, did something that if you were told me I was going to do two weeks ago, I would have told you you were crazy. I just drove across country from L.A. to Michigan um, for, you know, time just to do something different. So I have a house over here, actually. So I come stay, you know, in my house over here for a while, and especially now since it's getting warmer. You know, it's nice to have be in a different little place, a little lake town over here in Muskegon, Michigan. So mm. check it out. Look it up. You like to have a fun place to go. It's a little bit of everything, a little bit of country, a little bit of trees, a little bit of lake, lots of sun, nice, nice little life, uh, nice little vibe life. We got graves and stuff over here, and a little bustling downtown technology and a high inter- high speed internet. So we're all we're all good over here. So it's pretty fun making a little new new start, as people say. Sometimes you just gotta have boop, make a restart button and change everything. So. It was we are very familiar okay. with reset buttons. Let's, let's yes, hope our, our AI is also familiar more, with these reset buttons. <laughs> the one thing that I was looking forward to was the views. I think as far as views, probably Utah was the best. And, you know, if you like rocks and snow, um, you know, but On it was drive. just cool. That drive was cool. Other than that, um, it was nothing, nothing out there for you, man. <laughs> mm. it's, well, I, mean, I was yeah, pretty happy it, to see you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was nice. nice that you got to come through and stop for one night. I was hoping we could like do a, a recording together while we were there or right, figure out right. some other fun stuff, but it just didn't it didn't play out. So here we are doing our thing a couple of days late, but better late than never. Yes, sir. So uh, So what's uh what what's the latest you've been seeing? What's uh I don't know. What what's been piquing your interest? Well, um the late, I don't know, if, not too many people have heard, but Disney just invested $1.5 billion into Epic Games for an equity stake to make it the gaming uh, Disney universe within Fortnite. So this will basically merge Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, Avatar, and more, all in one experience, all powered by the Unreal Engine. So you oh, can you pretty are. much make your own stories um, and experiences with each character from any one of those movies or franchises. Um, wow. there's a couple of, there's one particular movie, which this is exactly of it's ready player one. If you haven't seen ready player one, this is real life ready player one coming to happen. Um, there's another, uh, movie is- called watcher that I think everyone should watch. And it's basically about the social dangers, not of AI, but more of, um, uh, social media. And so I just think that if, if you watch these two movies, you can kind of see how we can, you know, watch the, have some dangerous things happening. So just watch out for some dangers. Um, you know, one of them is, you know, people doing scams and everybody getting into things, you know, making things happen in real life. I just saw an article that these two people were um, having sex on top of a New York subway and somebody was taping them. And so there's a news report and you see people, you know, so it's like the people are probably, you know, get paid in real life to do stupid stuff. And that's kind of what the watcher is. And I'm starting to see some of those things uh, happen. So it's kind of, you know, I was driving in LA and everybody, all of a sudden, you know, they stopped all the cars and then it was like an all of a sudden motorcycle show. And, you know, I was just trying to drive down the street one time and then everybody just like blocked the road. I'm like, where are you going to, you know, at least, you know, anyway. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, I'd say watch out for, for, it's going to be interesting. I'd say it's going to be interesting <laughs> how things so, are going to start working real life. So the, the, the Watcher, I'm, I'm trying to follow, The Watcher is a TV show or it's a movie? It is a movie. It's a movie. And it's the movie, movie is uh, about being watched. Um, it's about, let me see, what is it? I don't find it. It's a, so we, we can get to specific to answers, work. right? Just ask. For right. Right. Like, well, what is right, it? right. Right. Um, it's make a summary in a movie. Oh, damn. 
it's after long. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's basically, <laughs> I was, I was just say, do that in 50 words. Mm, let me take a look. I don't like the way that the way that uh, plot, plot it, summary. It, 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 American couple, uh, this is Julia and Francis, right. move to Bucharest, oh, Romania. Oh. Julia becomes increasingly suspicious of a strange man observing her from a opposing apartment window. Attention builds around oh, potential it's... threats, including a reported serial killer <laughs> known locally as the spider. Julia struggles to okay. convince those I made close to her while grappling. Is it is it's this is this the movie? Life. It's called It's a different nerve. movie. It's a different movie, yes. Nerve. Nerve, just nerve. Like the nerve. Is this is this with is this with one of the Franco brothers? Yes. Yeah, okay. I've seen parts of this. Yes. This is I just watched it again the other day. Uh it's pretty sick. It had some new perspective for you? Yeah, it's it's pretty sick. So Nerve is a 2016 movie, action, adventure, crime, techno, thriller, Emma Roberts, Dave Franco, based on a book by Gene Ryan. And the film this follows a young get, woman becomes involved in online. Yeah, I have seen this game. There's watchers and there's players. called Nerve. And the watchers yes, yes, yes. play the players to do stuff in real life. This is, yeah, this is going to be a pretty interesting thing. At what point does the AI become the watcher? And that's what I'm saying is the AI can, that's, can create, that's, the AI can get, can create like, yeah. these personas since it's all fake anyway and have uh, people do stuff in real life. I feel like I just got brain freeze. I'm thinking yeah, of... Yeah, uh, we're already the there with season. followers and watchers. You know, there's, there's some people who just lurk, who yeah. just look online and don't post. And there's those who post all the time. So, like, we're talking now about a potential reality where these tools are sending out and having humans do tasks right. only temporarily, right? Right. This is actually, this was a plot point in the uh, Westworld, the last season. Okay. Yeah, everyone there, there was the the you wanted to like do crime you would just like go on your phone and it'd be like do this thing go to this place do this thing go over here like so hold up this store or whatever it is and you just do the crime whatever it like told you to do and i think the whole thing was orchestrated and like operated by the ai in the end rehoboam they called it yeah strange yeah, if, if we can but think about if you could have a meta world or a virtual world with all your favorite characters including like a, someone from avatar or anyone from star wars i mean are you kidding mm. me so if you can have all the and, and fortnite you know what i'm saying so because you think about it people spend real money to build their character right now yeah they so they're not just going to just give up their character so if you if you're a fortnite player and you've been playing for years and you Put you know hundreds of dollars into your character to have you know this perk or that perk or whatever you know yeah. whatever game you play if it's especially if it's another online world you're going to want to still have that character no one's gonna i mean people are going to do it but people are going to hate to you know have a whole bunch of different you know things you know so i don't know i think that would be very cool but i just think you know people and i know the government's going to try to regulate it and there's nothing they could do about it because they've already ruled that AI cannot file for patents. Wait, I, yeah, you were telling me about this, that yes. I did see something about this particularly that was fascinating was that in the U S somebody came up with, uh, an AI that invented something. Right. And then he tried to go to, it was called, Oh, what was it called? Uh, Robum, Robum. <laughs> Bauham. It was some, some. It was four or five letters. I'll, I'll look it up and add it uh, shortly after. Uh, but he pretty much the AI came up with its own invention and mm -hmm. all of the patent details. And he tried to submit to the patent office, and they were like, "No." But in certain other countries, they have accepted these patents. That the in, patent initiator is an AI, AI. and 
Of See, course. I don't like How that. else is this? But where else do you go with this? Of course, they're going to the AI is going to invent stuff. It can see things that of we can't course. see. So yeah. who's responsible for it then? Oh, the AI is. Wait. So, huh? I don't think I don't like I don't I don't think we should allow AI to because what that does is that basically means that there's no more human no humans won't be able to invent things anymore because I could just create an AI just train it on every freaking patent in the database. And say, yeah. invent me a patent that's not in this database that would be great for humans. And then within days, there would be no more of anything anyone could patent. This is an interesting reality that I, it, it makes so much sense. If this and if that's the case, the then there will be innovation. Because that's the whole point of innovation is, as a patent holder myself, I know. There won't be any more innovation. <laughs> the whole point of innovation is to make sure you're the only one. And I actually realized last night, you know, I'm hella late, but I realized what I was putting, I realized now what I was putting together has now been grown into. And I'm just glad to be part of it. Uh, we now call it infrastructure as code, where you can write code of a network and infrastructure that you want and have it physically deployed in the cloud. So I own a patent on the UI that allows you to do that. So if I'm just thinking if there was, I'm sure it would have happened eventually, but I'm just one of the little pieces of basically what is now known as infrastructure as code or Amazon CloudFront tool. Cloud formation. So this tool allows you to, you're saying tool. like, this allows you to pretty much use prompts in order to write code in more no, 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 no. time. You're, imagine, it's like what Photoshop did to photo editing. You have all your tools on the left side. Like if you're going to make Photoshop, you have all your brushes and your all mm -hmm. those kinds of tools and things like that. Oh, I see what you're saying. This, this is like the, the, the heads things of that you can use on a network. So it'll be a load balancer or a database, yeah. you know, a, a virtual machine, you know, that kind of stuff. And you can drag it and drop it onto the canvas, right click and edit the properties and build your network how you want it. And then click go. And then we would write the code based on what you put in your yeah. browser and have it physically deployed in the cloud in seconds. Oh, okay. So it's like not WYSIWYG, but it's like proxy code. It is so. kind of WYSIWYG if you think about it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. If anybody thinks I'm bullshit, well, then patent number 920-1702. <laughs> go check it. Go check it. Go okay. check it out. Like we'll, even, we'll even add that somewhere here. Uh, yeah. The uh, So thinking more about the... Uh, like kind of what you were talking about right there about how there's lack of innovation. Did, did you see that uh, Instagram video I shared with you from Will I Am? Yes. You never know who's going to drop a gem, right? I think you actually liked it, which is why I saw it. Yeah. That was when people start they saying are. these things that they're so like yeah. casual, but when they hit you, they're like, Oh yeah, I didn't consider that yet, but you're totally right. This, this is like the most logical conclusion that things are going to be. Yeah, make. that's one of the fun use cases of AI. Like, that's one of the fun, like, you can't get mad at that. It's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, but that was cool. I mean, glad that they just showing that it could uh, be done is, is, is cool. It's cool. I like the way I would definitely want that in my car. And I bet you there will be mods coming out, like the whole DIY versions of almost the same thing. Wait, 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 what are you, what are you, what are you talking about? You want the same thing in your car? Are we talking about the same thing? The will I am in the car with the music and as you drive as with the music? No, we're not talking about the same thing. Not talking about the same thing. You need to be more descriptive <laughs> because I don't understand what you're saying. I need to be more descriptive too. The will I am post that I shared with you is uh, the recent one was not in the car. It was where he was just talking about. Play it. Man, I'll yeah, just play it on your phone. Let me just pull it up. Let me just pull it up. Let me just pull up. Investments on AI to make machines smarter. There's no limit to the amount of money that's been pumped into it. The investment in HI to make humans smarter, human intelligence. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> that's just sad. It's that's sad the truth. That we're going to live in a world right around the corner where machines will be more articulate, Can you turn it up? analytical, critical thinking, banter, ability, um, contextual, deep understanding, 
while we have resorted to play it, just let it play over in there. Short yeah, tweets, yeah. emojis, memes, and stickers to communicate. My biggest concern is this one. Just let it bring it so that we can get the whole AI to make machines smarter. There's no limit to the amount of money that's been pumped into it. The investment in HI to make humans smarter, human intelligence, <clears throat> that's just sad. It's sad that we're going to live in a world right around the corner where machines will be more articulate, analytical, critical thinking, banter ability, um, contextual, deep understanding, while we have resorted to short tweets, emojis, memes, and stickers to communicate. My biggest concern... Excuse me, what do you do for a living? Like, it's already happened. We've already taken the, like, we've already bowed down and allowed for, like, the shortest path towards things, right? Yeah. Just like you said, emojis, memes, like, short tweets, all that stuff. We're not interested in watching long videos. And AI is going to come through and just be like, okay, you, you don't want to do any of this stuff? Well, I'm, ha I'm really good at it. Let me do all that for you. And I think we don't understand, I think, what that's going to feel like. Mm -hmm. Even right now, as we're sitting here, just like having this discussion, imagining about that specific scenario, it's hard to know what that's going to feel like. Yeah. And I, I would like to hope for a bit of a wake up call for just moving us towards. You can't keep moving towards shorter and shorter, shorter and shorter content. Mm -hmm. it's just it, it, like that race to zero like okay we have now it's our attention span is 10 seconds it's eight seconds yeah. or it's the first well, two seconds time. like like and you know what this like, kind of maybe this is? is where what go ahead oh well oh, I was gonna so, see I... you got it you got it you got it, you got it, you got it. There, there's a slight <laughs> okay. delay between us so sometimes we end up stepping into these toes which is completely fine because we'll okay just, okay we'll just work on i was gonna but i'll make it quick I was, this is gonna this is why i see it's getting harder for teachers because as the student's attention span is getting shorter, that means their ability to learn within a certain amount of time, let's say an hour of class yeah. time, is getting shorter. Because when, at least when I was learning, they said the human attention span was around 15 minutes. So you can get four good high, you know, high peak levels of learning within a good hour. Now, if that's going, you know, if that's getting shorter, I can see if that's getting shorter, would, does that mean there would be more peaks of attention spans? If that's the case, then cool. But but it would be but everybody we would have to kind of tune in to how long people's attention spans are. And then I know we have like, you know, ADHD and other things that affect that. So it's like, then do you put these people in the same class because they have different means of learning? Like one mm -hmm. one group of students can do it in, you know, ten to twenty minutes, but some students need the attention span of like maybe two to three minutes. Like then do you start segregating and then it's like what, just attention and it's mm -hmm. genuinely in the best effort of yeah. the learning it's student. just attention I, mm -hmm. I, yeah and then i can see some people going oh well now you're alienating my student and i'm like well, but no we're just putting it in the correct environment you know what i'm saying like you don't want to put a small fish in a big fish pond kind of no. thing you know it's like so no child I, left behind right <laughs> so everyone gets the same treatment exactly <laughs> okay so education is ripe to be completely revamped by ai mm -hmm. completely 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 revamped there's gonna be some there's gonna be some people that are happy with that but at the end of the day yeah. like what is the goal of education it should be to have the most informed and the most like capable right population Yes. But that, as since at least the 1920s, I don't think that's ever been the objective of our education system. It's been to, to create good, good workers. The only thing I'm speaking of education and AI, the, the, the thing that I'm worried about, speaking of education and AI, the thing that I'm worried about is that is the education of the AI. Since all some of our education and our history has been re-raced and e erased and rewritten. And yeah. that's what we're training the AI on. Yeah. That means the AI has a false. It's just narrative? bad data. It's just bad, bad data. data. It's data. prejudice. Also, yeah. It's like a, it's, it's just bad data. It's not, it's data. not so like it's not wrong. It's what we loaded in.
Right, right. It's really loaded in. <laughs> right. uh, so then you can't, that's, that's what I'm saying with education, you can't just want to create AI to teach kids because it's going to look online and it's going to know the things we're doing now with, you know, CRT and all that stupid stuff that's going down in Florida, thinking that that's what's going on everywhere. Yeah. At yeah, what point think, is, is the AI supposed to be trained on the best available research and like insight or just the mass available data that's, uh, that's like on the web? Like if you give it everything and you say distill it, I think it should without, be medical research. Same, yeah, something that's been peer reviewed and all that other kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. This one's gonna come up over and over and over and over again. It's like, what's your what are your resources? Mm -hmm. What data is this using? But more than that, what is its its values? What is the system valuing when it's giving you some of these like deeper philosophical questions, like creating a an effective educational system that brings all the children along and allows them to all excel. To what goal, right? To what right. purpose? Like you need to install whatever that ethical value sort of structure is in order for that system to operate the way you want it to. Mm -hmm. Or you go, like, could you just go say it, just like build the best system that you can think of? Uh, like it could come up with anything. It's just, what is it indexing for? What is it trying to optimize, right? And I think this is going to be the question that I think has been well, well discussed, and I'm going to probably have to start reading a lot more AI books just to, to get caught up with some of the, the pre-discussed stuff. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's like, what is the value system of the value structure of the system? Yeah. Is it trying to optimize human happiness? How does it de define happiness? Is it trying to optimize just straight cash, money, wealth? Is it trying to optimize... I don't know. You can pick pick whatever you want. Making sure everyone has food, making sure everyone has shelter. Like you can bet it's not going to index towards these things because these AI systems are not being operated by people who are pressing the buttons that are saying yes and no to things that are mutually beneficial for all of mankind. Usually it's mm -hmm. beneficial for a select few if not just them. Uh a good example of uh AI gone bad well, I guess not trying to, um, speaking of people trying to need to speak of again, the education and stuff like that. Um, well, I guess we wouldn't really call it that, but AI gone bad, uh, Air Canada, Air Canada got in trouble because someone used the, the chat on their website, uh, for some information and it was wrong. And so when the guy executed on that information and found out that it was wrong, he sued, uh, Air Canada and they are responsible. Small claims. Yeah, yep, they are, they are I actually love that you shared that with me and I, I got a kick out of it because I have a friend that works for Air Canada and I actually just texted him to ask if he had heard of it and what he thought about it. And he's like, yeah, I saw something on the news, but like, whatever. I just thought it was really preposterous that the argument that was used by the lawyers for Air Canada was that's a separate entity. And it's responsible is, it was literally for like, all actions. <laughs> yes, yes. They, that's literally their argument. It's a literal widget, like the, the equivalent of like a a message box in the bottom mm -hmm. corner that is on the website, the entire bot that was there. And they tried to say on the Air Canada website, it's like, no, 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 that thing is like, it's got its own directive. <laughs> it handles its own stuff. And it, the funny thing was, it was a small claims court over $800. The Air Canada was like, no. And instead they end up pretty much becoming the poster child of like, whoops, AI gone bad. <laughs> That's not even that bad. Luckily, we're talking eight hundred dollars. Like, let's get these little ones out of the way so we can start fine tuning. But just like crypto, I have a friend that works for the Blockchain Association. It's like a uh -huh. foundation that brings together all the different blockchain companies to try to like collectively bargain more or less with the government to have like clear communication about what the objectives are uh -huh. for the industry and the the government. And I remember checking in with him during the crypto sort of like waves of 2022, 2020, 2021, 22. Yeah. And he would, every single time we talked every like two or three months, I'm not going to name his name right now, but every single time we talked, it was a completely different state of what was going on. He was just like, we got a bunch of these politicians that are all upset about this, but they have no idea what they're talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. Everyone's mad about NFTs, but this, everyone's mad about now, the point I want to get to was it was fascinating to see that um, uh, every single time we talked, the timbre of the conversation would change. But he um, was always on the lookout for the big one, right? 
because all the politicians were waiting for that big money moving scam or the big break or the big and it ended up being our very own mm-hmm. ftx right that was the one that was like oh shit and we shit the bed <laughs> it was one of our very own that all the politicians loved and it created such a big kerfuffle and i feel like this is kind of like that 2.0 ai yeah. is coming out coming out coming out coming out and i'm sure there's a bunch of regulatory bodies that are trying to put some sense together to like try to put a, a lid on this to keep it under control but I, i'm pretty confident that it's 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 out there and yeah. now all we can really do is just wait to see how some sort of shit goes wrong so that we can then allow for our legal system to do what it does, or I guess our, our, sorry, our judicial system to look at it and then say, okay, we, we need to do some retroactive fixing to our, our law. We need to update our laws to, to accommodate for this. And I haven't seen too much of that so far. So maybe we should start a segment, a segment that just follows up on just like the legality, um, that sort of evolves in, in AI. Cause there's going to be a lot of case law that's going to be coming online. And, and luckily we have AI to help us interpret a lot of the complexities of what's going on. But I think right now it's going to be a lot of these sort of like interesting, paradoxical um, human questions, just like what you said with uh, the patents, like mm-hmm. can an AI file a patent. So, well, it can be creative and it can come up with a new idea and it can make something that's valuable, but can we append it as the originator? And you say you don't like it. I also don't like it, but I don't see any other way. Like it, it has to be pointed to at some point, like it came from this AI. The, but then the, where does the dollar stop? Like whoever benefited from it maliciously or AI can't test it, right? AI can't test it in the world world. AI will probably it doesn't know. It's so true. it doesn't know if it'll work. So if, if AI patents something and people think, oh, AI, right, it must work. And then they make it and then it only destroys. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think that's like, yeah, no. <laughs> mm. So yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's really, be, really uh, interesting. Yeah, there shouldn't be. I don't want to say the laws, but there shouldn't. You can't. Just shouldn't be allowed. It shouldn't be allowed to do everything. Uh, yeah, it should have control, full control, read and write. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's going to be a really tough one, though. I'm sure we're going to keep coming back to is just like, yeah, wh- where do you draw the line, and also who do you, who do you apply responsibility for, whatever thing goes down. So there's one thing I actually want to go back to and touch on about the Will I Am video, which was the, the main point of what he said, which was we're investing trillions of dollars over the course of the next probably not very long into AI, but how much are we investing in HI? Right. And that's pretty much the crux of this this podcast is yes. is where does the human component sort of nestle human. in with that so that it actually it, it it, it optimizes the purpose it was actually intended for, which is to make humanity better. Right. If we're pushing anything out that is not improving our, our own ability to like survive and thrive on this planet, then that's just like, that's bad. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So like, it's what's it going back to, all these wars. to the ethics question is always going to keep coming back, keep coming up, keep coming up. But I think there's also like the things that he listed as things that AI will be better at. I, I wasn't too concerned about, oh, it's better at banter. It's better at critical thinking. It's better at all these things. That's good. But then where does that leave for the human to be like, the human's still the artist, right? They're still the one that's deciding this is complete. This is done, right? I want you to do a advertisement for me. I want you to do a book. I want you to write this passage, write this email, adjust this, change this. The human is still like the final decider of like, this is good. Right. What, what gets executed. Yes. Yeah. But I think this is now coming to a point where like, it means that we need to be training sort of human taste and human like ability to discern good from bad is like, is that a skill set that can be cultivated that allows for humanity to sort of like do what it can do best in relation to a system that's doing everything else it used to do. Mm-hmm. You can kind of see where, where I'm going with that. Yeah. 
like there's got to be some other skill sets that are like hard skills that humans are will always just be useful for <laughs> and necessary for a lot of things and i think a lot of them might not even exist yet right we might not have even identified where people will sort of fit into the equation i don't know every time i go down this this road my dystopian sort of like headlights keep like coming on and i i don't see the happy path quite yet uh, yeah i don't i'm not sure if there is one or what it is but uh we will have to figure it out i'm gonna find out together so let's jump over to some of my personal issues because i don't know what other people are using ai for but i'm still using it for image generation which feels a bit like doing like the, the the funniest like menialist the smallest thing that it can do but it's flashy but i still can't figure out how to make like nice generated images do you have any pointers or tips that you could probably help me to kind of like improve my image generation game i do actually and i'm looking up i know i had a bunch of them stored on my computer i'm looking for them right now for example the album art for the podcast this very podcast is an image that was generated and i kept it with all the misspelling and all the stuff it says like infinite elliot podcast and Maybe it's just the model I'm using. Like, I guess, why is it intentionally jumbling up letters and like doing that? Is it to like avoid copyright? If people are like putting me, like, if you say like, make me an Apple ad or make me something. It actually has, a, it actually, it, there's a lot of, it depends on what you use to generate it. If you just use plain old like Dolly where you just write the prompt or something and it does for you, it, that might happen because there's certain, uh, let me show you something. Take it away. So the, while I'm pulling this up, I know it's gone here. I just have to figure out where the hell it is. Okay. So this here friendly little app is called Diffusion B. I have a MacBook Pro with the M3 Max chip, so it has all those fancy features that I can do on, on my computer, and I don't need to do an internet connection. So this basically allows me to generate images using stable diffusion or any other model that I want. Um, mm. in, you know, how I want to do it. Um, mm. so I have, I have generated a few image. You could do images to images. Um, this is an AI canvas where you just enter the prompt and it'll just make, <laughs> it'll just make it, uh, mm. Uh, let me see. Here's an illusion generator. So it's like you give it a prompt and you can also, I think somewhere in here, you can upload an image or something like that uh, and stuff like that. So first, let's just start off with a basic touch to image, right? What I do sometimes and what I think is best is I use ChatGPT to generate me the prompt. To come up with um, the prompt. Yeah. Okay. Yes, to me the so prompt. you're using another system to generate the prompt to get the right nuance and that sort of stuff. And then you pull that prompt and then use it in a different system for the actual image generation because it has different UI and user interface tools that will allow you to do that better. That is correct. <laughs> that, that is that is correct. So you can so anybody can use whatever you want. I'm using the wonderful perplexity, of course. And I'm going to let you generate me a stable diffusion prompt about a podcast named Infinite Intellect that is about what's our Infinite Intellect, spell it right, human and AI, human intelligence. All right, so I'm very sure it's going to give me a prompt. -y. Let's see what it says. Let's craft an engaging description using keywords and phrases inspired by your preferences. So it's, it's asking you for more information? 
and then No, let me try this other collection because I have different props and different collections. Yes. All right, see, yeah, I just got, if you give the right prompt, you get the right answer. So here's my stable diffusion prompt. Uh, stable diffusion prompt for infinite intellect podcast on human intelligence and artificial intelligence. Create a captivizing visual page. Okay, I'm just gonna, it's a lot. I'm just gonna paste it in and see what image to so we get. So I'm gonna paste it in right here. I don't know if I can make it bigger, but uh, here's, here's the prompt. Can't make it bigger, so I'm sorry. One, one figure represents humanity's intelli intellectual prowess while the other embodies artificial intelligence. Both are engaged in a deep conversation under soft lighting amidst glowing orbs symbolizing ideas being exchanged. Ooh. A subtle holographic overlay showcases data streams converging to form neural networks as they discuss topics related to cognitive abilities, consciousness, creativity, problem solving, ethics, and future implementations of integrated humans and machines. Then it gives me some keywords, things like that, that it could use. Mm -hmm. And we're going to click go. So on mine in particular, I have different models already loaded because these are basically different, mo different image diffusers that are trained on different image sets. So for mm -hmm. example, I had this one right here called uh, Modi is, um, trained on Disney images. Samaritan is trained on like 3D cartoon type images. Uh, mm. Dream Like Diffusions is very dream, you know, it's very dream, like, you know, microscopic is the view of like looking at okay. something like close. So it looks kind of like yeah. shiny, but like not. So it kind of depends on the kind of model, uh, the kind of artistry you want. Um, so let's, let's try to, Pick a good one here. Uh, Real Viz XL is more of uh, a real, like it looks really real. Like if I'm doing like portraits and stuff, something like that. So we can do a couple of different ones and let's pick two and two different styles. And then we'll pick the best one and we'll use that as a logo. <laughs> mm. um, I usually like to go with first, uh, um, Let's do cyber realistic. We'll do a square and we'll do four at a time so that we can pick. Um, and we'll do uh, different styles. I could do no style or we could do like a neon punk style, origami style, watercolor, vector art. Ooh, that might be photographic. Makes it look like a photo. Let's do that one. And then we'll click Henry. Egg. So and it usually happens. You have, a couple minutes, we'll have four images. You have already shown me that I've been going about this definitely. <laughs> and it makes perfect sense that you'd use specific systems for different things. And stable diffusion has come a long way since when I was playing with it two years ago. Yes. So this is pretty fascinating stuff. Whoa. Okay. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how to make it look better. I open my advanced options and then I'll show you the differences that it'll generate. Notice these ones are popping up pretty quick Yeah, and it, it's a pretty good of what we did. But if you notice, like you said, there's the fingers don't match up. Her face is whack. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's because it was using the default options. Cause what you want to change here is the sampling steps. The sampling steps is how many times will the AI look at what it wrote and redraw it again. So it's going to draw it, redraw it again, draw it, redraw it again. This is 25 times. How many times I usually do? I crank it up. I put like 70. Um, yeah, seven. I usually put about 70. That's, that's pretty freaking good. Um, and then you can change what you find. Once you get the right one, I do 512 now because it's smaller and it generate them quicker. 
but I can go all the way up to 1024 by 1024. So when you find the one you like, then you can, you can make it bigger. So all I'm going to do is change the sampling steps and you'll see not only it takes a little bit longer, but the quality is that much better. Mm, Same prompt. This was the I didn't change the prompt. Forward. I didn't change the prompt if you notice. And if That's I want to, there's just, there's something called the negative prompt. So just like how up here you have the prompt that you want it to rock, draw or, or generate, this is the negative prompt. Like you don't want it to generate. So I can put multiple fingers and show you that. So now look at the quality of the that are coming back. Wow, yeah. It's much more refined. Right. The facial, the hand. So this is cyber realistic the model that we're using, right? Remember I selected a yeah. whole bunch of different ones in this drop down over here. Yeah. So this is what the cyber realistic model looks like. So it's like realistic, but like you're already in the metaverse. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So selecting the right model and having the right model that's pulling the right resources that way you're not pulling everything. You're just pulling right. the things that help you get towards the style that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Do you have a, a model or can you, how would you go about finding a model for a specifically, I guess, print related copy or publishing images for advertising? Is there a model that currently exists or would you have to create one? Like, what's The, the model doesn't publish the images. You can just create one that creates, like if, if there's a newspaper style of imagery, you can train it on all the newspaper images, I suppose. Yeah. And then that's all it would be able to generate because that's all it knows. Yeah. So what would you train or what, what type of model would you want? So the question that I'm sort of leading towards is now that we've, you've shown how to like improve upon an image, um, uh, let's talk about a functional image that would actually help us sort of with some of our other ventures, which is, uh, finding the optimal, I guess, ad copy or ad image that would stand out among a bunch of typical advertisement placements in the newspaper. Well, isn't that the constant struggle that's been happening ever since day one of newspaper images? Everybody tries to find the right one that stands out. So I don't think there could be, I don't think know if it would get any better. Maybe it'll help you quicker, but it, it only depends on the person who's viewing it, if it's going to stand out or not. Well, yes, yes, for sure. So I think probably you're, we're answering my own question, I suppose. Uh, piece by piece. So if we train the model on a bunch of newspaper images of other advertisements, do you think that would give us like a starting point of like make something that is more eye catching than yeah. what is currently on this existing palette? Mm -hmm. Yes, that would totally work. Actually, you can train um, image models with this program also. I'll click over to it after it generates these, but Okay, okay, okay. So it, it's regenerating, but I did change the model because now it was using cyber realistic before. So now I'm yep. using the real, the real visual XL30. So you can find these models online on uh, Hugging Face, um, Civit AI. Um, there's a few. Replicate has some also. Um, so if you, yeah, they're, they're all pretty free to download. Of course, just like any other model, you have to pick the one you like. But. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So have you spent any time developing these models or you just go and find the ones you like online? That's super. I find the ones use. that I like online because developing a model and Training making it. that data set. And then what, it's not easy. It's not like a, a file. It's not like a file you just upload and then, okay, once the file is uploaded, it's done. Like it takes time once the data set is in the model for the model to learn the data set. So that's why yeah. when you hear people talk about training, when they say it takes a long time because it really depends on how fast your computer is how, you know, and then, you know, how much input you put to all those parameters. Like when they say it's like 7 billion parameters, 70 billion parameter, all those things have a lot of underlying mathematical computations that have to go along with it. That makes, you know, all these parameters have to turn into something so that when you ask the model, it knows it right there. Like there's no processing. It just knows, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's the hard part is getting a machine powerful enough Up to, to speed. train your data set. Yeah. Yeah up to speed so that you get expected answers from it that right. you expect, not it expects. <laughs>
Okay, this yeah, image is going to be amazing. Be much, to much longer. Long yeah. This one, how long have we been waiting here? It's been at least a minute. This one it better blow our socks off. Pause Three, for effect. Two, one. Survey says. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. Much better. We have a correct number of fingers. Yeah. It looks like uh, he's talking to Mr. Smith. <laughs> Did you see? Uh, maybe you didn't, but uh, there's a Joe Rogan clip. There's so many clips from Joe Rogan. So, like, I, I, I would you'd be surprised if you saw this one. The one I saw was uh, they kept running the same image through the the AI and asking it to, like, make it more happy and there was a, yeah. a rabbit that they had like make, make an image of a happy rabbit and they're like okay make it more happy and they would come back and they're like okay you're not getting what i'm saying like make it like even happier than that and they kept going kept going kept going and it ended up with like just like um a, a pretty much a mandala of like colors and lights and they're like the essence of the bunny is pure happiness. It's like, mm -hmm. there's no, there's no bunny anymore. It's just like right, right. Just shapes and circles and stuff. It's just like pure euphoric, like cosmic energy. And I'm like, okay, wow. This, uh, the, the segment ended with uh, Joe Rogan saying, wow, this, uh, AI just described God. <laughs> it's cre created a picture of God. I was like, this is getting pretty, pretty interesting with what we're talking about and what we're going to see coming up because, I mean, the things that AI can think and do is going to seem godly to us. Yeah. Very, very shortly, if not already. But it's it's like God without love. God without appreciation. I think I'm gonna I wanna try a three D cartoon one after this image. Yeah. Let's see. I think give it a shot. Yeah, let's let's wait for a couple more and then we'll move on. What other fun subjects did we have today? That was the main one for me. Just after this, looking at some like local advertising copy. <laughs> if we could come up with something that I could upload uh, to the, the newspaper website and see if we can get some phone calls coming in. I think it'd just be a fun social experiment to see if I could actually get anyone to pick up the phone to ask I questions. Would say use, well, just use perplexity, use perplexity to uh, generate you a prompt. And if you, oh yeah, I guess I should give out the prompt that I, if you use perplexity, you can create collections and in each one of those collections properties, you can give it a prompt. So every time you go back to that collection, it will use that prompt. So I created a collection that has a gym, an image generation prompt so that anytime I type in a query into that collection, it'll always generate me an image prompt. And now mm -hmm. that they, you can generate images with perplexity, if you go to the right side, after it comes up with a prompt, it'll actually generate you that image right there. Let me go there and do that now. Mm -hmm. This is the one that I've actually been using, is that little side button. And uh, maybe you can show me some new features with it. I've been having a lot of just like pressing it over and over and over again to like get another image, get another image, get another image. And eventually just picking one of the five or seven times I've pressed it. I'm highly impressed. Let me save this. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Something came out. Yeah. I did it. I said to generate a photograph. I'll do a painting. Oh, look at that. Same thing, a little different. Hmm. Okay, we're going to save her, too. Ooh. Ooh, perplexity, yes. Wait, I'm going to show, I'm going to click over and show y'all in a moment. <laughs> like, the suspense uh, is killing me. Yeah, I know, right? I'm trying to do this for styles because you can generate painting, photograph, and illustration. I just did painting. I'll do illustration. Photograph, we'll say. We're not going to let this one finish. It's taking too long. I wanted to try the 3D cartoon one. Same everything. So these are the, the images that we got. 
And I stop. Bookshelves filled with knowledge. Hmm. Are books going to be the new records? <laughs> Maybe. Like, oh, you have a book? Can I touch it? <laughs> I have to say, I've been crushing audiobooks lately. Like, oh, yeah. I use I used the Headway app. It, like, summarizes books into 15-minute or, like, set, like the, the seven, like, key points. And it's like reading yeah. a whole book in, like, 15 minutes. Oh, I do it as the Oh, ones. that's pretty interesting. Just to yeah. get the, yeah, if you really want to get the most out of whatever you're reading, you can read it. Yeah, I put it on when I go to bed or when I'm like driving or something. And like I can read a whole yeah. book in like 15 minutes. And the books are good. Like I've never been able to, like, oh, I want this one and that one and this one. More self help and like productivity and like very yeah. helping yourself books. This is your casual plug for Headway. Mm hmm. All right, let's see what we got with this. Bring some swag, Headway. <laughs> ha! Well, <laughs> quite okay, the interesting We one. took a very different direction with it. Captivating, depicting, yeah. Interesting. You never know what you're going to get, which is kind of the fun part, at least for now. Man. Nah. You can just have fun with this kind of all night long if you're going for like something specific. Oh yeah, especially if you've got an uh, an uncensored model that you're using. Wink, wink. Oh yeah, that's a whole other yeah. area that we know <laughs> excited about. Yeah, it's out there. People Ooh, are. People. I've, I've got actually. I've had some pretty some pretty sick uh, some pretty sick outputs from this 3D cartoon model right here that I'm using. Samaritan 3D cartoon. Yeah, it's. It, I've gotten some pretty. I did one. Uh, I, I, and the thing is, it's only interesting if you know what the prompt was. And I'll just be putting in random shit. I don't even use chat GPT or anything. I just be like, I was like, oh. <laughs> Ooh. My eyes are all. That's interesting. What do you see? The orbs and the second one over here. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Yeah, I had to start generating my images and doing things on my local computer because I'm tired of paying for tokens. Open AI is not the stuff. I was trying to do my uh, Dr. Dre in a bee farm. Do you know how many times I had to try that because Dr. Dre is a copyrighted thing? Ugh. <laughs> So what, you, what were you trying to do? I don't understand. I was trying to, I'll show you some, some of the AI images that I've generated, but I was trying to yeah. do Dr. Dre in a beet farm. And Dr. Dre in a beet farm. Okay. I got you. Farm. Grow, like farming yeah. beets. Like the, yeah. The growing beets. Book. And, yeah. uh, I couldn't do it with Dolly three because Dr. Dre is a copyrighted, uh, entity and you can't redraw copyrighted energy entities. So a lot of people, um, yeah, so a lot of times they wouldn't do that. Dolly wouldn't do it. Uh, There's a couple other ones that wouldn't do it. But I got some decent ones out of Stable Diffusion. Mm. There's also Mid Journey. Yes, I know. But it's not so easy. Mid Journey, you have to run through Discord. And Discord isn't the best UI for Mid Journey. And I know they just came out with the Mid Journey UI. I know. I'm just, I just haven't started using it yet. I just haven't started using it yet because I've been using the one on my computer. But I'm sure I'll use it soon. And Maybe crossover. So shout out to Mid Journey. Not trying to lead a body out. I like this one because this this third one because it looks like the AIs are like behind them, kind of like helping them. These little orbs, but then they're like talking to each other. Yeah. This one's cute. Almost the same one, but our fingers are in proportion. Yeah. So when it's taking this, they're all sort of similar because it's using the same prompt. 
the same prompt, but it, but it, it doesn't use like a different like is there something about like kernels or something seeds seeds. The seeds are random because I use negative one. Okay, but then how does then if the seeds are random, why did we end up with? Oh, it's because of the prompt. But the prompt is the same. But this this these two seeds are probably close to each other, as opposed to these two seeds. Yeah. So this is more a representation, I guess, of the actual model that was chosen. It chooses to do images like this. In this style. In this style, yes, in this style. And then the prompt is what sort of has given us all the individual features. This one looks fast. Dream-like diffusion? I mean, we can sit around that and I can do all of them. I'm trying to do the ones I like best. I'll do, I'll do one of these and then I'll do a Disney one. <laughs> yeah, the Disney putting 1.5 billion into Epic Games because they don't have to do it. It's just like Microsoft did with OpenAI. They're already doing all of it, so just here, yeah, here's some money to go keep doing it for us. Yeah, why do we got to build it? That's why when when all that when that OpenAI drama happened, why do you think uh, Microsoft was like, yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on, no yeah, problem, yeah. everybody, yes, whatever you want, just come on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see what we got here. I can't tell, okay, wait, just while this is generating, I can't tell, I, the outcome of what would have happened if Sam Altman would have not gone to open AI and all those people either would have started their own shit mm -hmm. or started working for Microsoft. Yeah. Yeah. That was definitely a fork in the road that could have gone really have bad. Things. Yeah. Just the beginning. Mm hmm for sure. Okay, I'm already not liking that model because, yeah, I'll save it anyway, but see, that's when it helps with negative prompts. You put, you know, five fingers kinds of things and then it won't generate. Yeah. That's one. I really want to try this. I think there's a new version too. I have yet to install it, but I'm gonna I'll, I'll click a couple of other options because it's more than just text to image. So it's also image to image. So I could take one the images that are generated and throw it back into another AI. Oh, I just killed it. Oh, it's still going. Okay. I so you to. can take it and then add additional context. It doesn't. It uses that as the starting point. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. Disney one is fast. That's why we like her. <laughs> She's fast. Hmm. Okay, so you're giving me much to think about with the prompts and also the models. And I've been living in like a very small world using only one color. And there's a many, many different colors out there to start painting with. Which, which model is this? The Disney one. The Disney model. Okay, it's a perfect one to end off on, seeing as we started with Disney. Disney. Let's see it. Wait. It's yeah. not, not too bad. Yeah, it's it's, it's Disney-like. Yeah, I can see the I can see the connection. Why is there a light coming out of? I don't know. If I, <laughs> let's try that one again. <laughs> that don't do, work out too well. It's like a light coming out of her head. It's it's still come so far. There's so far to go. Won't take long. Won't take long at all. I had a phone call today. I called this business and it was a you publishing did. house and I was trying to ask them some questions about their like 
their operations. And I was I had this feeling that the person I was talking to wasn't a person. And you heard all the like idiosyncrasies and all the little nuances of her voice, but it's it something was off to me on, on the call. Yeah, it just felt like I didn't even know like what to do with that scenario. I just like I don't know. I, most of my life is just asking silly questions and waiting for an answer to come back, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like now that AI is coming around, I just ask more silly questions because it's like I I honestly don't know what could happen here. <laughs> And if I ask you a silly enough question that is just like on point enough, I might trip you up to at least like get the signal that I'm not talking to a human. I have no idea who who's on the other end now. Before we had no idea before, but now we have like no no idea. I don't even know if there's actually even a person on the other end. We're like, yeah, I'm in an office in New York. Are you? I'm just going to have to go back to knocking on doors and just like talking to people face to face, showing up unannounced. <laughs> just checking in on people. Okay. This model's, this model's not working. Let's, uh, let's, let's wrap this up. Not giving us anything that's. Wowing us. But I appreciate the, the overview and the rundown of how to optimize those images. I do a lot of image generation for the newsletter that I produce, and it'd be nice to get that more to like a refined flow rather than a lot of just like pretty much shuffle and see what comes back. Okay. And well, we're, we're at an hour, so yeah, we're at an hour. So I hope everyone had fun with our <laughs> image generation demo. A lot of image generation today, so hopefully that yeah. gets people excited to to go and try some new things out. Try something. And, uh, <laughs> this is our <laughs> final image from Disney. Yeah, I can see a Disney kind of works like that. Kind of works. I, I could see it. How long is it going to be before someone like you or I could use an AI, you think, to just produce an entire, like, Disney movie? I think you can do that now. I don't know if you could do an hour-long one, but if you have a little short story or something, um, yeah. That's pretty outrageous. Like, what does that mean for Disney? I, I just got stuck on that right there. <laughs> like, if they can do animation and just keep iterating, 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 like, what you put on the screen doesn't even matter anymore. It's just about the storytelling. Yeah. It's about telling, like, real heartfelt human stories. And this might be where humanity still has its, its stronghold in being actually the, the one who's able to, to come up with these authentic, heartfelt narratives. Yeah. All right, well, let's That'd just be about the story. It's just, it's just, the stories just have to be generated. I mean, not generated, uh, good enough for someone to want to watch it. Yeah, this is really all it takes. All it takes. <laughs> yeah, someone all right, who's guys. willing to pay for it. Yes, and who's willing to pay for it, correct. Yes. Yeah. So that concludes uh, episode three, I believe. Episode, we, we're calling this episode, episode two now. Two. Episode yes. two. Episode next two. Epi next week, episode three. We'll come back next with some new stuff. Three. We'll come back. Yes, we got our numbers down. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much for your time. And we'll see you soon. <laughs>